Hi everyone, welcome to The Lighter Side Show. I'm your host, Jamie Butler, teaching you how to be the everyday medium. And today we're gonna to talk about five ways to display your crystals without being woo-woo with it. But first, some housekeeping notes. We have some live Lighter Show events. We have one on September 29th with Darshna Patel, which she's going to give us some examples of some hands-on healing energy. She's calling it Energy 101. And I have some online classes coming up, a beginner's mediumship course, where we're gonna learn about your subtle light body, your energetic body, your chakra system, learn how to see, use energy, and then the class that follows that, which is not on the books yet, but if you push me hard enough, I'm sure I'll do it, is the advanced mediumship course. All right, guys, we've been listening. We're changing up some of the set and the sound. We hope you like it. Write in and let us know. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You guys have made this a community effort. I really can't thank you enough. And I think we're gonna start reaching out to you guys and seeing your opinion on what our set should look like. Maybe future titles for a Maitland series because she's been bothering me a lot. Um, <laughs> she's here now, <laughs> so I might get the giggles. When she's around, I feel a little like, expansive like in my chest like after I've been laughing for a long time and she definitely disturbs my thoughts where I can't keep a linear train of thought so thank you Maitland you can now leave so let's get to the topic we love crystals you love crystals but maybe your husband doesn't or your wife doesn't or your kids or you're having a work event or you want to have your crystals at your work how do you do that without looking, I don't know, a little eccentric, out of place, a hippie lost from 1960s? There's so many ways to do it these days. <laughs> crystals are amazing and extremely unique. They're basically the thumbprint from where they were made in the earth. And in that phase, the heat, the location, the minerals trapped contain a certain kind of vibrational pattern. And when you place those around you, it can increase your energy tenfold. Now there's this whole thing called gridding. Where do you place those crystals to enhance the energy? But that's in another podcast with Miss Laura Boone called Gridding. We hope you go check that out. Today we're just gonna simply talk about how do you display the ones that you really like. What crystals do you buy to begin with? Let's do that. Buy the ones you're attracted to. End of story. Okay, that's simple enough. Let's turn the page. No, I'm, I'm serious. Buy the ones that you're attracted to. You don't have to be sold it. Sold it? <laughs> but I'm serious. Buy the ones you're attracted to. You don't have to be sold a crystal by somebody else. If you're not liking it visually, then I wouldn't bring it home. Okay, good enough? Now, we only have seven shapes to work with when we have natural crystals. That's it. Seven, nothing more. We have the triangle, we have the square, we have the rectangle, we have the rhomboid, the hexagon, the parallelogram, and the trapezium. That's it. Those are the seven natural crystal shapes that the earth makes. Now there's also man-made, which they're tumbled. Tumbled means that they're going to be round and even shaped round. These are awesome. The ones that are shaped round make great decor pieces. So let's talk about the five ways. The five ways that I've really come up with that I've seen throughout my life is, one, it actually has a purpose, and that's why it's placed where it is. That's a good one. It's a centerpiece. So it's a collection or cluster of crystals that creates a larger piece, a centerpiece, or a piece of art. The third is simply decor. It's just something that you enjoy you put it up on a shelf um, it doesn't really have a crystal placement it's just up there the fourth is memorabilia that you picked it up somewhere and it has a meaning to you it has a story behind it and the fifth way in fact is a little sneaky i like to say it's more hidden than how to display because sometimes you really want to have them close to you but it just doesn't make sense so we'll talk about those ways to get it in there as well. So let's talk about the first one. The first one for me is purpose, where it is actually doing something for you. Let's take this one. 
This is a massage instrument, so you can have it in your workout room, you can have it next to your bed, you can have it in the kitchen, the living room, wherever you guys are working out your sore muscles. You take that however you want to, guys. But this is a wonderful instrument, and they have it in different crystals, so you can choose based on your visual appearance and what you energetically need. Other things can be simply paperweight or a magnet. This is Ulexite, also known as the TV stone. When you place it on words, you can actually see through the stone and it doubles the image. It's really cool. Kids love this stone. Another purpose is bookends. Let me swing over here. Look, amazing enough, I found these books. <laughs> Wait a name drop, right, Jamie? Name drop. Okay. It has a purpose. It's keeping your book secure on the shelf, but it has many other purposes because it's rose quartz, solid through and through. And rose quartz helps with family bonding. It helps with clarity of heart and emotions. Who wouldn't want this everywhere in their house? It's great stuff. Other purposes for crystals, you can find it in jewelry. Of course, you have rings, earrings, so forth. But this is my new favorite thing. Not this one. Keep watching, keep listening. I have a tower of selenite or selenite. Some people pronounce it differently. Emphasis in different syllables. Ah, oh, work with me, kids. Okay, and this one, next to my groovy microphone, is, I'm gonna take that out. This one next to the microphone is a lamp. So a lamp has a great purpose. It can be a night light in any room, it could be an accent, but people don't tend to question items if they have a reason for being there. So I would say if you are in a house that's quite difficult with displaying crystals or with the woo woo world in general, and they're kind of telling you that's too much, you know, that's weird, find things that have a purpose. Got it? All right, let's move to the second one where it's a centerpiece. And we'll go ahead and use this bowl and get rid of this wiggly guy on my desk as an example. But have you ever gone into a home where they have those huge wooden bowls and all the fake like fruit displayed? It looks great, doesn't it? I love that kind of stuff, big time. So if we do that with crystals, it kind of looks like, I don't know, a junkyard where things came to fall or die. <laughs> so keeping it more simple is actually using a crystal you consume every single day. All right, it's not really a riddle, but do you want me to pause until you figure it out? I'll show you. Where are, oh, it's right here. Salt, this is it. It's table salt. Here's a bowl, here I go. Salt is wonderful because not only does it absorb moisture in the room, it'll also absorb negative energy. It really does. And you'll know when to replace it because your salt will get um, a little brown and it gets thick. Otherwise, it stays very soft, so what it registers to the eye is sand. You don't walk by and go, oh, that's weird. Is that a bowl of salt? No, they don't do that at all. But now you can display crystals. It holds it very well, now it's not wiggling. Now it looks like an eyeball. But the crystal matches the bowl, and you could set this up on a shelf and people aren't going to question because it looks like it belongs. You could put it in the centerpiece of a table, on a runner, on top of a table, anywhere. Another kind of way you can get away with having a centerpiece is your flowers. So in the vase, sometimes we'll place rocks at the bottom, whether it's that it's top heavy or we want to get the stems to set in a certain place. So check this out. Hmm, it's so sweet. My husband gave me flowers the other day because I was having a bit of a rough day and he came home with them. Melts my heart, honestly. 
this might get loud. <laughs> so now I have the em empty vase and it doesn't even have to be clear or see-through. You're still going to get the vibrational energy of the crystals even if you can't see them with your eyeballs. I'm gonna take a tumble topaz. Does that sound good? I'm gonna take smoky quartz. Black tourmaline and quartz with tourmaline shafts. And for my color, I'm going to use fire carnelian. Some people like to keep their colors separate and all layered. So you would pour them in just like I did. Some people like to mix them up. It doesn't matter. It will not change the way the crystal contains its own vibrational quality. But when you do pair together, they can create stronger energetic vibrations. So if you're very sensitive, I would ask of you, do your research, know what you're pairing, know what it means to you, and know how it's gonna enhance you. Also, if you're using crystals in a vase, you're, also, you're gonna be putting water in it. So I need you to research and make sure that the crystals you're using are not water soluble or will be damaged by the water. Then I would go ahead and place your flowers in. When you're happy with your look, add your water. There you have it. Moving on to the next one, which is like decor or art style pieces, which I like to consider when you group your crystals in clusters. Now you can choose all the same kind of crystals or you can do different ones. And you can also put them in jars, containers, bowls, and etc. So I have a lot of interesting containers. I picked these up at flea markets. I think this is an old coffee pot. You could fill this up. I have one back here. It has carnelian in it. It's a little light bulb. I mean, these things are so much fun. Look, you can do tiny little jars that has solidite and um, coral agate. And you know what they have these days at the craft store? You know I love crafting, right? <laughs> they have these empty ornaments for Christmas or any other holiday kind of celebration. And you can fill them with your crystals. Now for smaller arrangements like this, I love to use beaded crystals. And you can get beaded crystals at your arts and crafts stores. Though I would read the label please, because a lot of them are stone and they're dyed. And most of the turquoise that they have is actually howlite, which is this white one here, but they dye it blue. So it looks like turquoise. Read the label so that you know what you're getting. You may be visually pleased about it, but I don't want you to get plastic. I want you to get the real deal. So you can decorate ornaments. When you buy them in a string, I like having a long, thin piece of wood or bowl that you can lay the string of the crystal beads out. You cut one end, and then all you do is take your fingers at the top, pull the string out, then all the beads will lay in that one little container. Some other super cool containers for your modern tough house. You can have <laughs> the chemistry set. <laughs> and you can fill them to the brim. You can actually put salt at the bottom of them and then put a crystal standing up. There's so many different ways that you can use all these unique little containers to display your crystals. And so let's say you do this. Now, the ornaments make sense. You're probably gonna hang it on something. But what do you do with the rest? You can put them up on the shelf or you could get <laughs> yeah, get, 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 get. or you can get even more clever and buy a box or a container where they can all fit in. So let's have a moment of fun and put all the crystals in the box. Okay, I have it a little set up. So some of your bottles won't fit 
doesn't mean that they can't go cattywampus. These days, symmetrical is not all the rage. You can set it up how you wish. Now, I talked briefly about clustering. So clustering is when you take probably more than three crystals, at least more than two, and you can do a like mind, like color, and you group them together. And it looks as if like they're creating a family. That's what I like to think of. I see she just must really like that color or she just must really like that stone. So she's putting them all together. Now, if it's more than like five, let's separate them and spread them throughout the house. Because yes, we know you're a collector, but at the same time, it can also look a little cluttered. Look at this gorgeous piece of black tourmaline. Now this is naturally terminated on each end. Terminated means a point. Now a point this perfect and gorgeous here on the rose quartz is man-made. But this one is natural. So it's a rare, nice find. We have malachite. Love these patterns. If you have patterns like this on your couch or your home, this would make sense to have on the, the sofa stand sofa table next to you. Another thing that I like to use is clear quartz. Clear quartz has a lot of benefits. I encourage you to read about it, but people often look at it as glass. When you have a piece of clear quartz that is pristine and perfect, it looks like glass and it's not. I love using the clear quartz because it doesn't trigger anything from the viewer, like the color or shape. But my second favorite thing are these phantom crystals. And I'll give you a close up look. These phantom crystals have phantom terminations or phantom peaks inside the shaft or the wand of the crystal. And so for these, they're almost used more as an educational or wow factor. So grouping these together and displaying them and people ask about it, then you can share why you have them, which kind of leads me to the next one, which is memorabilia. So I mentioned about the clear quartz and the phantom peaks. And it being a bit of an educational or check this out, just like the TV stone, you know, it's something to show off because it has a pretty amazing quality to it. You know, when you put this over words, it doubles up, it has a nice rainbow glaze to it. It's amazing to look at, just like the malachite with its swirls and dimples and its weight alone. This is not a light piece. It is very dense and heavy. So it gives you something to talk about. You want to show it to people and you want to share the story that's behind it. So if you just have a random crystal laying out and it could be a tumbled piece, it doesn't have to be anything grand. And somebody says, well, why do you even have that? That's so strange. You're like, well, I found it on the ground when I was out in the desert. And continue your story. And you say, so it holds that memory for me. All of a sudden, everybody who's around you can understand you being attached to a memory because the rest of us humans do the same thing. Now, if you have an extravagant piece, like clusters. The geoids, they break open. You can find these as tall as myself, five foot tall. You can put them next to your doorways and the openings. It would just change the way people bring in their own energy. But if you have something that's a little more like, wow, that is a chunk of a crystal and you don't know how to explain it to people, if they're to look at it and wonder and it doesn't go with any of your decor, nothing, but you just had to have it, it had to be yours, you can tell them things such as, and you know, I'm not about lying or even white lying for that matter, but if it's someone you know you can't really share why you're using this, then you can tell them that you saw it in a dream and that dream had great meaning to you, that your deceased loved one was in there and they were showing it to you and you thought, I don't know, I don't know what it means, but I had to go get it. And so then people can rationalize that. You're doing it because you had a dream. Everybody has a dream. But if you say that you are in deep meditation and your guides came down to you and said, you must have this amethyst, 
you know, and turning around and explaining it that way to whoever's asking, it might not go well. And then you have to launch in to explain your belief systems because you might be the kind of person who wants people to understand you. So keep it simple. Keep it about you. You don't need to explain why you love these things, honestly. But if you're trying to sneak them into your home, look at finding ones that have purpose. Look at creating centerpieces around them. Use them for little decor, tuck away things, you know, or um, use them as mem memorabilia pieces. Wherever you travel, you get a crystal. And you go, oh, that one's from Machu Picchu. Oh, that one's from Florida. That one's from Canada. That one's from, you know, and then people are like, oh, so you just collect them because that's where you've been. You're like, yeah. Oh, they totally get it. You no longer have to explain anything further. Or you can do the fifth way and you can hide that. All right, Lumineers, we're going to talk about the last way of the five ways to display your crystals without seeming woo-woo, and it's a little bit of my favorite. <laughs> if you have kids, you could do it this way. Hey, kids, take these stones and hide them in the house where the vacuum cleaner won't grab them or nobody will find them. Boom, you're done. <laughs> but if, you're, if you don't have kids or you don't want to entrust them with your crystals, then you get to do it. So... Pillows. My favorite is the pillows. It's the pillows. It's all about the pillows. Because guess what? Your head is on it for like six to ten hours a night. If it's not the pillow, it's underneath the mattress. If it's not the mattress, it's underneath the bed. My number one top favorite, favorite places. Now, if you're doing this for your kids, kids tend to sling their pillows around quite a bit. So what I do is I take the edge of the pillowcase and I will put the crystal in the edge of the pillowcase. I just make a tiny little cut and I leave it open because I have to take the crystal out when I wash the pillowcase and I slide the crystal in to the opposing side and then tuck the pillowcase in. So I put the crystal on the top edging of the pillowcase and I tuck it in underneath the pillow so it's not gonna hurt the little head. And then take the bottom and tuck it in as well. So it makes a clean edge. See that? Makes a clean edge at the end and the crystal is actually underneath the fluffy part of the pillow. But you can take it in and out. If it's for an adult, I just take the crystals and slide them into the underside of the pillow. But if you have a pillow that has a zipper on it, or you have a pillow that has a protective case, which this one does, so you can hear the crystal clonk, protective casings will have zippers on them. And there's the real pillow. So you then can take your crystals. I like lapis lazuli. It's a third eye, it's opening up to beyond. It's a lot of balancing and protection. And you can slide them in, zip it up. Trust me, you won't find it with your little head. You just won't. And one is enough. If you're looking at underneath your bed, I would tend to say one on either corner, so that's four. But underneath your pillow, one is enough. If you're attracted to a few, like say you wanted selenite or selenite in there as well, then sure, you can put two different stones. There's really no rules or anything. I just want you guys to be comfortable with playing with them and hiding them throughout your house because this is the part where it's really fun. Another place, let's say it's your guest bathroom or your little, your little like one man bathroom off the kitchen. Oh, I don't have anything that's like that, so I don't know what to call it. It's half bath, there we go. Okay. This is the Kleenex box. You can take your crystals, whichever room you want it in, your kid's room, let's say you have younger kids and you don't want them to swallow it. If you want to put it in your bathroom, you don't want anybody to see it. In the kitchen, anywhere you have Kleenex, you can drop the crystals onto the side and it goes to the bottom of the box. And there you go. You've now put a crystal in your room, whichever room you want, and nobody can see it yet vibrational quality is coming out it's fun isn't it i like this one a lot another one that i do in this office is i hide my crystals underneath the cushions so i've been sitting in this chair i know i have them 
Ah, yes. Onyx. Yep, my two pieces of onyx that I keep in my cushion to help me stay grounded while I'm doing my work. I'll put those back because they're useful. <laughs> Another place is if you have really nice trim around your doorways, I love tucking it up and over the doorways. You can always use double-sided tape if you're putting it up high or putting it somewhere where it needs to stay secure. That way it doesn't just fall on your head when you're closing the door. Well, what do you think, Lumineers? Are you inspired to go get some crystals that you're visually attracted to, right? You don't need to know everything about them to go shopping. Please don't let it overwhelm you. Just walk in, touch everything, hold it to your heart, just hold it into your hands. Visually, if you like it, if you like the way it feels, whether it's just kind of simple, like, oh, it's like a baseball, I like the weight of it, get it. If it's oh, it makes the energy in my hand expand or all of this. If you're more sensitive and you can identify that, great, then get it. I just don't want it to overwhelm you. And especially if you're in a position, Lumineer, that, you, that you're really attracted to all of this, but your family's not supporting you or your community's not supporting you yet, you know, find the ways where you can have it and you don't need to over explain or paint yourself in a corner that you're not ready to be in, okay? You guys got this. So the five ways that we covered is get one that has a purpose, you know, a bookend, a lamp, those crystal Himalaya pink lamps that's been glowing behind me the whole time. Those are great for computer energy waves and EMFs. We talked about centerpieces, something that's grand, like the flower, <laughs> I put them behind me for some reason, like the flowers putting them in a vase, uh, putting the salt display. We covered decor and art, and that's when you cluster them, tuck them up on shelves. So it's pretty, it matches the room. It has a purpose that way as a decor element. And then we talked about memorabilia. You grab one when you've traveled and you have a story behind it that you can share. People accept that. And then we talked about the sneaky way to display, and that's kind of in a hidden fashion. <laughs> and we covered those. So for that, Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for commenting and sending us your questions. We love following through with what you need. That's the whole reason about this and especially about building community. I cannot thank you enough for lending your ear, for supporting this whole momentum, for fulfilling my dreams to teach all the things that I see and that I know and that I've experienced. And I just want you to let you know how grateful I am we have to edit that out because I'm getting verklempt. I'm really so happy about all of it. <laughs> so remember, it's not woo-woo, it's true-true.